Hello. Hey, welcome to Wine Wednesday. Here we are, Bonova Winery, doing it again. October 21st. Uh, what a day. This month, this year has been moving along. Um, and we just, uh, it's one of those things where you're like, hey, where did the time go? What is happening? This year's moving so fast. I know sometimes it takes forever to get there, but we're moving along. We're celebrating uh, a lot of things to celebrate. Um, I'm drinking the sparkling, which um, everyone that came here today has uh, come in and enjoy themselves with the sparkling. So uh, cheers to everybody. Great. And um, yeah, so we've got some exciting things happening. We have a full bar sitting out there. there. We'll uh, show you that in a little bit. But um, we're going to be making some pasta. And we're going to learn how to make the pasta. We'll see that live as to what you do. Now, for myself, I'm a person that just goes to the store, buys the pasta, and that's it. But to see this actually in action and then to eat it is really the big thing that's really exciting for me. And we're going to pair that up um, with a couple of different things because the sauce on there is a lemon caper crab cream sauce. And there's some fancy name for it. I can't tell you what that is right now, but that's all I know. It's just a fancy cream sauce. So we're going to do that. Um, we'll show you what's going on out there. We're going to actually see it live. And then we'll explain the wines that we're doing. Chef Adam and uh, great assistant Jill is going to be helping him put this all together. Once again, our staff is uh, helping out, uh, getting the meals out to everybody. I think we have 18 people sitting around the bar right now that's going to be enjoying this fantastic meal we're putting together. Because, of course, we did a uh, little appetizer when you came in. You had your little cheese board. And interesting, we put the sparkling with that, so that matches with everything. And then, um, well, well, we did the sparkling when you came in, but we're going to do a little Pinot Noir with the uh, cheese board. It's when you start pairing things, you want to make sure that they match up. And in this case, Pinot Noir is such a great matching wine. It's not really heavy, overpowering, but yet you're still going to get some of those great flavors that come through uh, with the cheese, with the different sauces, the bread. It's just really going to taste great and uh, just give you a little bit more expression that's coming through on that. Uh, personally, for me, I'm really enjoying the Pinot Noir, but uh, who doesn't mind a little sparkling as well? So. Cheers to you guys out there. Um, so what I want to do is um, we're going to move right into it. I know that um, we've got this actual, Adam's going to be cooking and putting it together. I think maybe Colton's getting ready to wheel his way out there. Jill, can you guys hear me in the kitchen back there? Are you there? Maybe they're not. That's okay. But um, they're uh, busy putting things together. So I'm trying to see what's happening, but anyway, we'll keep rolling. Um, for you wine club members out there, we are gonna do a pickup party this year. Yes, in front of everything, we're gonna do a pickup party. Now we're gonna do that a little differently. I know on our pickup party, we usually did one night before we set that aside. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open the winery early, 10.30, um, in the morning, and we're going to do a little sparkling with a little crepes. So a little brunch kind of feel, get your day started on Saturday. And we're doing that for two different days. Um, November 4th, we're going to do that, and November 11th. So two Saturdays, we're going to do that. You come in, the whole winery, you get it to yourself. Um, we'll send out an email so you can find out about that. And then you'll be able to come in, reserve your time, and put it all together. So it's uh, a little different, but it's going to be fun. And that's just going to go through because we love, who doesn't love crepes and sparkling? So we're going to put that together and with the little uh, wines that we'll have. So you, there's a few little bites, little sneakers we'll put in there as well. So that's one thing we got going on. Another big thing is we have harvest. Uh, so last year we did about 120,000 um, pounds. This year we're at 160,000 pounds and we still have to bring in our Riesling and we have to bring in our Cab Franc. It's getting a little chilly and I know the guys are working hard at it, but we're gonna be bringing that out and uh, we're gonna be putting that out there for you guys. I got people yelling at me from the side and doing whatever they're doing, I don't know. Um, but we're gonna be putting that out there and bringing all that, uh, 
all those grapes in. So we're pretty excited for that. I know the guys have been working real hard downstairs, so hopefully I can cut away and get down there and show you guys that uh, probably uh, two weeks, because in two weeks we'll be doing the next one, uh, November 4th, I believe. Yep, November 4th. And we're actually gonna showcase uh, mac and cheese. Now, the mac and cheese, we're gonna do four different types of mac and cheese because every week of November, we're gonna showcase a different mac and cheese. So we're gonna kind of put those together in two weeks for you guys to take a look at. I realize it's after, uh, after the election on Tuesday, November 3rd, so get out and vote. And then what we'll do is make sure uh, we have a great meal to go up with that as well. So I think we're gonna go to Colton, or I don't know if everyone's frozen. You could just be listening to me talk all night and I'll try to explain everything to you. I don't know, we'll see what's happening. But um, I'm drinking some sparkling but I want to change that out a little bit. Um, as they're getting their stuff out there, we're going to be going into uh, a couple Chardonnays. And it's interesting, you know, we really want to at Bonobo talk about um, what we do well. And one of those things we do well is Chardonnay. Chardonnay is a great grape. It um, has a lot of characteristics that um, allow you to move in different directions. We could be a, uh, a stone fruit, you know, green apples, peaches, pears. We could go into more of a tropical. Uh, we could do, um, if we're going to guava fruit, if we're going to pineapple, those different expressions come out in different clones. And then with us here, as we do our Chardonnay C, um, right here in this fancy bottle, um, it's more of a Chablis style. And that Chablis style, actually is stresses the minerality. It brings out that crisp flavor. It brings out that um, um, getting really close in terms of uh, a green apple. And it's funny when people start talking about how does it taste and what goes through with it. There is a different taste between when you bite into an apple or if the apple's already open and you're eating the flesh. And those give you some different flavors. So when you bite into an apple, um, that's more of our Chablis style. It's more of that minerality, um, a little bit of the acid that comes from the skins there as well. So that's more of the Chablis. When we start talking about the Chardonnay Select, that's where we get into a little bit of the oak. And that's more of a Montreché style. Now the story goes that in uh, France, as they're putting these things together, the Montreché um, came from the people that were on top of the hill. They had more money, they had more things going on. And so they had actually the oak barrels that they could put together. Whereas when you go to Chardonnay C, it was lower down the hill and they were using concrete. Um, they didn't really have steel back then, but they were using concrete. And so it really brought more of that minerality out. And Chablis is uh, lower down there on the hill versus Montrachet. So that's how we got those two different styles coming. And we like to stress those with the different clones that we're doing. And it's great because even though they're the same grape, uh, what you do differently with them is what you're going to be able to pair them with as well. So, um, consequently, that's why we have the Chardonnay. They have two different ones. And a lot of times when you start talking about Chablis, people may go to an unoaked flavor or they may go to um, a stainless steel. You may see that on the label as well. But with us, we chose C, we chose C just so we could actually, um, it, it's a little differentiated here because also in the same sense, if we have a very, um, an older barrel, say uh, five years old, and we may need to round out that Chardonnay C a little bit, we can put it in that barrel just for a little smoothness. And we don't want to sit there and say, hey, it's totally un -oaked. And then someone's like, hey, I caught you. I got you that, uh, I got you a little oak on there. So we don't want to be caught doing anything wrong. So that's why we went with the C on that. Um, I know Christy is frozen on the camera. I don't know if you can hear me, Christy, you're just still out. But um, I think we're getting ready to go to the pasta making. I see people moving around down there, but I don't know what's happening back there. But um, yes, yeah, so that's what we're doing with our Chardonnays. And then we talk a little bit about Pinot Noir uh, as one of the main grapes that we're putting together. Now, Pinot Noir is a very finicky, Great, it does grow great up here in Northern Michigan. Um, 
sometimes some clones will grow like Medusa's head, so to speak, in terms of the, the shoots just go everywhere and it's very hard to control. And, and this, the fruit um, being a little bit smaller berries may not yield as much um, crop as what you're looking for. And it's a, a little temperamental. But as long as you get that, now Cornell been working here in this area for over 20 years, he's kind of mastered that and how to put that together. So as we talk about our Pinot Noir, we knew it was one thing that we really wanted to put out there. So that is uh, one of our big points that we're um, really stressed as the winery putting together with that. So, Colton, can you guys hear me yet? I see action, but haven't heard anything. <laughs> so who knows? Who knows? I, I couldn't be left out here just fending for myself the whole week. But uh, Colton, they bring me food. Uh, Colton, uh, Jill, Adam. Anybody? Oh, hold on. Anybody? Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes. Okay. So can you, you see us? Making some pasta. Can you see us, or can you just hear us? I can see you and hear you, and I'm looking at the bar right now. What about oh. now? Yeah, now I'm looking at you. No. Okay. <laughs> All right, Colton's gonna go bring you guys out to make some pasta. Okay. Now we're gonna walk, go through this process of. Making pasta, so you don't, this time you go. Hey, how's everyone doing tonight? Great. How are we doing over here? We're going from there. How are we doing? We're doing great. Excellent. So I'm going to start uh, by giving a shout out to these two ladies right here. Oh. Uh, my mother. Oh. <laughs> Babysitter. And also, I, I gotta say, uh, my first food memory comes from Teresa, and it's something as simple as an egg sandwich. But honestly, he was only four. <laughs> so uh, again, with these two ladies, without them, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be saying here. You wouldn't be enjoying this evening. So we are very proud of you. So tonight we're going to, I'm going to demonstrate how to make pasta, okay? And the pasta that we're going to make is a fettuccine. So it's a little bit thicker noodle, and I'm not, um, I'm going to make it a bit thicker than you would typically find a fettuccine, so it's going to be just a bit more rustic, okay? Uh, and what we're going to pair that with is a bechamel, a simple bechamel, and I'm taking and doing um, just lemon zest to flavor it with lemon and caper with a nice lump crab meat. So it'd be a really hearty dish. Uh, the Caesar salad that you have in front of you, there's no croutons on there. I used toasted quinoa to give that crunch, but I figured with having uh, bread on your first course and then bread with the pasta as well as an addition of pasta, that's pretty heavy. So. Uh, without further ado, we'll get into making of pasta. Simple recipe for a pasta dough is all-purpose flour. I have four cups of all-purpose flour. If you have extra large XL eggs, uh, four will do, right? So one per cup. Now I have large eggs, so I'm adding two additional eggs to this recipe. And all I have is flour, eggs, and olive oil. That's it. Okay, that's how we're going to start. I use salt in the water to, to bring out that saltiness. You obviously want salt in cooking. So what I'm doing is just making a well. I'll go ahead and crack the eggs in here. I have just about a tablespoon of olive oil. He's new to there. And please, if you do have questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, there will be some silence going on. And I do, you know, I don't have all the answers to everything, but I certainly like to like to try. 
So just the eggs, the olive oil, whisk that up. I just use a fork with this because we're going to utilize the fork in making the pasta. You want it to be pretty homogenous because you want the yolk to get throughout the pasta. And I like just a nice, even well. So a nice flat surface, if you have, you know, just your countertop is gonna work well, so long as it's not too porous because they'll get caught up on there, okay? okay and then what I'm doing is I'm just gently dragging the tines along the edge and working my way around. And I also like to have, I have a bench scraper here and you'll see that coming to use. It's a very, very handy tool for this process, I find. So we're just breaking down the edge of the walls, scraping the bottom. And what I'm looking for at this point in time is I'm just looking for everything to start coming together and for this, you see how this pile just kind of moves around? I want it to have a little bit more form before I get the bench knife working, okay? And as you get more flour incorporated, you can kind of move the process along a little bit quicker. Now, depending on the humidity, this is not an exact science. You're going off a lot of feel here too, okay? So now we have kind of a good mass working. And I'm just gonna start bringing in more flour and turning it as I go. And when I can see that a lot of the yolk is getting soaked up by that flour, I'm gonna start incorporating my hand and pressing down. Now this is just starting to make a nice little dough ball. If you get too overzealous with it, you're gonna end up with flour all over you, which is fine. That's what it's about, we're making a mess. So. Now you can start to see this is really starting to come together pretty quickly, right? If you have extra pieces, like as you can see, some of this extra flour really isn't taking to the ball. So what I'm going to do is just move this out of the way. And then we're just going to knead this for about four or five minutes, okay? So it's a little bit of work. Um, I suggest you use straight arms, straight back, and lean into it. Use your body weight because otherwise, you know, unless you want your arm workout, that's fine. But it makes it a little bit easier to work if you're using straight arms, straight back. That's a, that's a long question, yes, yes. Yes. No, no short answers are, but yes, there's definitely lots of different uh, shapes. And I mean, the Italians, I'm not Italian, so they have a shape of pasta for every circumstance, absolutely. And then see, there's all sorts. This is a very basic dough that will suit your purposes, making spaghetti, fettuccine, doing ravioli, this is a wonderful pasta for that. And you can do kneading a couple different ways, but you always wanna fold and press, fold and press. I get working on it with two hands and roll with the heel of my hand like that, because you need a quarter turn so everything comes back onto itself. Now what we're looking for is we're looking for this dough to start to feel nice and supple and we want it to be not lumpy. So it's gonna be really quite smooth and also have some elasticity. If you don't work it enough, your pasta is gonna break. It's just gonna tear apart. So what we're doing is we're developing gluten in here and that's what stretches and keeps it together. So we can start to see as I press my finger, it's not coming back, right? That quickly. 
I want to see a really nice rebound. That's going to indicate to me that gluten is developed. Okay. Is there a specific flower like if you're gluten free, like what it's really easy to recommend that Honestly, there's a um, there's a brand called Cup to Cup, and I would I would look into that. That is going to be the best bet. Um, otherwise, it's, it's pretty tough. Pasta is one of those that are pretty difficult to do. And even, even with the cup to cup, it doesn't get that gluten development. So it's, it's kind of a hard, hard one to track. Here. I'm not going to take this completely because we kind of got to stay on track here a little bit. I feel like I'm already over on time. But so you're doing well. You I like your thoroughness on putting this whole thing through. It's really good. It bounces it. back. Okay, so the longer that you do that, it'll bounce back a little nicer. <laughs> What's that? So can you, uh, as you're doing this, um, how do your arms feel? You okay? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now, gonna... when you make the other shapes, are you do you pull them apart, or what do you? Um, is there different? Uh, you know, like when you make cookies, you have different designs that you can do with uh, templates. So to speak. So Todd, you'll see this in just a moment. I'm going to get out my cheater okay. and that will help us to that'll help us to shape the pasta that we're making this evening. This, I wanted to give everybody kind of a, an example of the dough so you can get the feel of it. The feel of it is the most important thing. Okay. Um, like I said, the ratios are pretty good to rough it in, but you really need to have that little bit of a feel to it. You can feel the, the elasticity of it, the smoothness of it, right? Make sure no one eats it, Adam. What's the question? Make sure no one eats it. Okay, so a really important thing to do after you're done rolling the dough is to let it rest for an hour. You're going to want to take plastic wrap, right? Wrap it up nice and tight, put it into your refrigerator for one hour at least. You'll start to see that the rebound becomes a lot less. Okay, that just gives the gluten time to chill out and relax. So now what I have here is our sheeter. We'll just affix this to our table. We're going to pull out a couple of sheets here. So flour is our friend with this process. If you don't have enough flour on your sheeter, it's just going to come straight back through and get all funky on you. So you're going to want to, I think I'm missing one part, excuse me. I'll be right back. I need to grab my crank. Otherwise, this doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> okay, so now that we have that done, um, you know, he's very best to, uh, he can't just turn it himself, which, you know, that's not going to work very well. <laughs> but, um, you know, we're, we're getting into this stuff. I'm, I'm worried about, you know, when you're putting, uh, hope no one's eating that stuff out there as he's putting it together because we do have to cook it before you eat it. But I guess he's got his crank, so he's so ready to go. We start off, each one of these cranks has numbered settings, and I'm taking this to four. So we're going to go through step one, step two, step three, And again, you want to kind of make sure that your dough isn't getting too wet on you as you 
push it out, right? Otherwise it can stick to your rollers and that's just a bad situation. You have to take your machine apart and it's not too much fun. Don't want that. Onto three. And four, finally. Is anybody crank it up to 10 or is that just the highest setting is four? Highest setting is going to be seven. We're taking it to four to give a nice thick noodle like a fettuccine. All right. And as you see, I'm gonna go ahead and take these down because we don't want a noodle that's three feet long. That would be difficult to eat. That movie, uh, Mike has a spaghetti and a fettuccine. Yeah, Lady and the Tramp, they had a long noodle there. I mean, it made the scene a lot better, but we'll As noodles. Okay. <laughs> the nice thing about fresh pasta is how quickly it cooks. And another thing about fresh pasta is you don't want to have it sit in your refrigerator like more than a day, okay? Otherwise, it'll oxidize. So if you're using um, an airtight container, you could hold it with like a, a storage sealer. Or what you could do is you can take the whole extra piece, like if I'm not going to use that, wrap it up nice and tight, freeze it, save it for another day. Okay, just pull it out in the morning. It'll be good to go to roll out later in the evening. <laughs> that nice and separated okay you don't want the moisture to kind of work it together and make a mat okay so then into nicely salted water it'll float it takes a couple of minutes not long at all and you're ready to go nice job So Adam's going to run back into the kitchen, and um, we're not going to use obviously that uh, those noodles that he just made. But he does have stuff that we worked on all day long. We we cranked it, and we got this stuff ready. So he's going to take that. Um, we're going to put together the sauce that we talked about. The uh, Lemon caper cream cat uh, crab sauce. We're gonna put that, um, but I think we're gonna talk a little bit about how they put that together. So Colton, if you can uh, get them on there. Great. And I think they're putting the sauce together. Jill, you got that going? What's that, Tom? You got the sauce going over there? Yeah, we got some sauce going. Can you tell me a little bit about that sauce? Well, Todd, you know, it's not my specialty of an Italian sauce. It's a French sauce, but I can still try my best. Uh, so how did, how did Chef do with uh, talking about how to make pasta? It was good. I mean, um, I'm usually just buying it at the store, but uh, hey, this, this changes the ball game. Maybe someday I'll spend the whole afternoon making some noodles and I doubt that, but I like your enthusiasm. Okay, good, good. <laughs> hey, we can. So I think can the point So Chef showed you how easy it is to make pasta from scratch. We're gonna show you how easy it is to make a, uh, a sauce that is pretty intimidating from scratch, which is the bechamel sauce. Yeah, so bechamel so is one of the classic French sauces that kind of is a base for a lot of things. And so we start, Wanna, we've, got, um, we've got some milk and some cream in here and we're bringing that to a simmer. We do that with a little bit of salt. If you just want to get it warm. And then the second, the main part of a bechamel sauce, which again is also a main part of, of making sauces is the roux. And so the roux is the blend of flour and butter. Equal parts, Equal parts of flour and butter. We have some room in the fridge to show. We do. There's right on the right hand side. There's down by your. Oh, that's crab cakes. Yeah. Uh, so what you would think is, you know, weird cheese or butter chunks. This is actually a starter roux. 
And so interesting thing that I learned from Chef Adam is when you're making a bechamel sauce uh, or making any kind of sauce with a roux, you need to do hot to cold or cold to hot, meaning hot implement to then drop the cold roux in. If you're just making up the roux, so again, it's a 50% flour, 50% butter, you whisk that up in a saucepan and then you would add the other part of the sauce in cold. But with this one, what we did was we would we heat this up and then we would add this roux in and then this is what we're gonna get. Now granted, we've done a little bit extra here by adding in some crab, some capers, some lemon, really delicious things to make it a beautiful crab bechamel sauce for our homemade pasta. Fabulous. Fabulous. <laughs> uh, and we're pairing this with our Pinot Gris. So Todd, did you talk about the pairing so far of what we've done? Well, I did. I, I touched on that a little bit. Um, you know, it's funny when you start talking about uh, as we're doing pasta, you would think with the fatter, um, areas in the uh, starch of the pasta that you would want to throw the Chardonnay in there. So that's why I was like, oh yeah, throw Chardonnay Select in there. But now when we're adding the sauce, we're going with that Pinot Gris mm -hmm. to kind of bring that out a little bit. Um, yeah. I, go ahead. Yeah, so with the first course of the Caesar salad, so again, the dressing is a homemade Caesar that chef made. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things in there. Obviously, main components of a homemade Caesar dressing is oil, eggs, uh, anchovies. Chef was walking around with a big can of anchovies and spilled oh, anchovy goodness. oil over the floor. So if it smells like anchovies in the tasting room today, not my fault. I'm calling him out when he cleans up. Well, who, who doesn't like anchovies? What? Who doesn't like anchovies, huh? I, I mean, I love anchovies. But anyway, so what... What we did was we paired the Chardonnay C and the Chardonnay Select with the salad because of the dressing, because there's so many things going on in the dressing. You've got garlic, you've got anchovies, you've got salt, you've got pepper, you've got all these different flavors. And so what's really nice about the two Chardonnays is again, you're kind of trying two separate styles of Chardonnay and seeing how it goes with, with food that has a lot of different flavors with it. So obviously things that are salty, that are briny, um, you know, something like the Chardonnay C, the crispness of that really cuts through that. So that's what's nice. But then the Chardonnay select, like the creaminess of that plays in nicely as well with the creaminess from the oil and the eggs. So I think it was pretty interesting to see the balance of the two Chardonnays with the Caesar dressing. Um, with the main course of the Pinot Gris with the pasta and the, um, the crab, uh, I'm forgetting what sauce we're just making. I just said the crab bechamel sauce. Um, the main point with that is, again, the Pinot Gris has a lot of acidity, uh, really nice kind of crisp flavors to it, which cuts through the heaviness of all of the cream, the butter, the flour, like all of the things that are going into that heavy cream sauce. But also you kind of get a little bit of those apple notes, those honey notes um, with, with citrus as well, which, which you know, goes nicely with the, um, you know, the notes that you have within the wine, which is, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the crab, the lemon, those types of flavors. So those kind the flavors in the wine of the lemon and the, um, the citrus and all that plays nicely with the crab and the capers and um, everything else going on in the sauce. All those things. All those, things. All those Italian things together. You know, yeah. uh, Jill, the interesting thing about the roux sauce, it was first used, they say, in 1793. Oh, so wow. Did you get on Wikipedia? It was more of a brown butter. Um, some words that they had back then was uh, bird's eye maple was a big one. Uh, they came out with the chi wink. Uh, Are you on Wikipedia right now? Well, I mean, you know, this is just common knowledge. <laughs> so common just knowledge. To okay. Make you aware of these things. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I think, are we gonna plate one up? Oh no, we gotta cook the pasta first, sorry. We gotta do that, but. Um. Yeah, so I got a question for um, Adam. When we're, you're doing the pasta, you know, a lot of people like to put it right and just drain it right into the sink, all the water. But I've also heard to keep some of the starch and hold it together and some of that texture, you use some of that water and put it back in uh, as you're putting the sauce together. Any thoughts on that? You know, my grandmother, okay, so my last name is Tara Lahoro, Italian. 
In Italian, it means worker of the land. You know what my grandmother calls pasta water? What? She calls it holy water. Because you yeah. put that on everything and it makes everything better. So you're always hanging on to a little bit of pasta water when you're draining out the pasta because that, it does so many things. Like with a sauce, if it's, if you have too much sauce, if you have, if the, um, the pasta ends up being too dry, using that pasta water afterwards really does, it's, it helps. Do you have any like actual like chef-isms for it? I've got like Nona-isms, but. I think Nona-isms uh, are, are better than chef-isms, honestly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so pasta water over regular water anytime. Absolutely. For sure. I like it, yeah, that's, uh, I didn't know if that was really true, but I'm glad you pointed that out, Jill. Uh, thanks for your little uh, wisdom on that one. What'd you say, Todd? Well, thanks for your wisdom on that. It's not my wisdom. It's my grandma, 92 last week. She knows everything. Oh, congratulations to her. Um, so as we're plating this, as you guys are putting that together, um, I, I can't wait for mine back here as well. So I'm waiting patiently since you guys just left me in the dark back here for so long. Listen, but, we have a salad made for you up here. Sorry. I just can't leave and go run out there. But anyway, keep going. Um, We're helping our guests first. Okay, okay, that's good. We need to do that. <laughs> Very nice. But um, as you're plating that and putting it together, now we, we think about the sauce going on there. Are you mixing it or just laying the sauce over the top? Oh, you go ahead and mix it. You go, you mix that up. Yeah. So especially with a homemade pasta, you really want to get that covered in sauce because I so one thing about homemade pasta, it cooks a lot quicker than box dried pasta. Yeah, I was gonna ask the question. Um, if we're going out natural and making pasta at home, it cooks a lot qu quicker. Yeah, so on natural, so we didn't uh, chef, just put those in and look at they're done. It doesn't take long for those noodles to cook in boiling hot water. So you definitely, uh, that's one of the, the positives of making fresh pasta is the quick turnaround time. And so obviously with something like that as well, because um, it is a lot fresher, you do want to get that covered in that beautiful sauce. You can kind of... Great. Um, you know, I was going to respond to a question here. Yes, we are going to put um, this and the other foods that we have cooked. Uh, we are gonna have a link on our website because we do have a YouTube channel where you can go get the recipes, you can get the wines and you can kind of check out all those different things that we have cooked through the season and um, get the recipes and go right through it and do it yourself. Yeah. See, that was the whole point of the season that we can show you how to do it nice and easy. Make homemade pasta with a homemade crab bechamel sauce, not that hard. You just have to be willing to put in a little bit of time. But you know, what I love to do, so again, if you're not Italian, what we used to do on Sundays was always homemade pasta and it would be a different kind of pasta. You would make it and you would spend the whole day with your family and do all this. I mean, again, I know in COVID times it's a little bit different, but you know, pick a day, pick a night, you know, especially people are spending more time at home right now. Homemade pasta is so easy to make and you saw like, even you don't need the fancy gadget that chef has. Obviously, like he's a professional, but the way that I make it is obviously the dough, and then you just cut it up and you do long ribbons and yes. make a nice, like thick papa dough. And you don't need the machine or anything. You just need a rolling pin or a wine bottle that works as a rolling pin as well. And then you just cut it. So pasta is so easy to make at home. You just need those basic ingredients, and that is it. Yes, I'm doing this with some part, right? Yeah. Right here. All right, now we got a little bit of Jill special, extra, extra Parmesan cheese to go on top. Yes, we let Jill take care of this because she has a heavy hand with the Parmesan cheese. And another thing to note with Italian cuisine, it is not true that you are not supposed to do uh, cheese on fish. So like this is a, a crab sauce. But the fact that they say don't you don't do cheese with fish is that it's just but Nick, that's not true. That is not true. Uh, we put Parmesan cheese on practically everything. We by me. I'm gonna okay. just my, people, my people in there as well. Speaks for Italy. I speak for Italy. <laughs> <laughs>
So I don't know about you guys, but and then we're gonna top this off. You got a little bit of greens to go on top of this to give it a pop of color. Go with our Pinot Gris. I think that our people are gonna be very happy with, with this delicious dinner. So I think uh, while we're gonna be taking a little bit of a different turn in pasta land in the next uh, the next Zoom, we're gonna be doing all things mac and cheese. Yeah, so we're, um, thanks for that, Jill. Uh, um, yeah, so reiterate, we're doing the mac and cheese. Now, who doesn't like mac and cheese, right? Everyone loves mac and cheese. I, okay, truthfully, I wanna see Adam make some, you know, those macaroni noodles. That that should be interesting to see how that's done. Maybe next time. Maybe next time we'll do that. But, all about the cheese. We're not doing the macaroni. It's all about the cheese. Uh, yeah, all about the cheese. So yeah. we're going to pull that off. Uh, like I said, two weeks from now, we're going to do a little special. Um, we're actually going to have four different macaroni and cheeses. Um, and really, it's about the cheese. We'll do some different cheeses, do some different ingredients that go in there. So that'll be fun. But then we're going to showcase those through the whole month of November at the winery. Every week's going to be some different mac and cheese that you can get. And the joy of that is you can come back every weekend and we're not going to complain. So you guys come on over and see us and just kind of check out what we're doing in the kitchen. I'm really excited about those things going on through the whole year in terms of we're going to have some dinners on Thursday, dinners on Friday, where you just come in. Yeah, we're putting together. You can sign up for those. Check our website to get all the information. Uh, BonovaWinery.com. Come in, reserve your table. Have a good time. We'll take care of you as usual. And um, you never know. We may have Jill back there. I know we'll have Adam there all the time. And uh, we'll just have a good time with it. And as we're patiently waiting for this food to come out, I can see it just sitting there. And I'm sitting here just starving, um, as most people are sitting at home wondering, hey, when do I get my plate? But uh, it'll be coming. Come see us. We'll take care of you. Once again, folks, hey, it's great being here. It's great being on and talking to you. And I can't wait to do this again in two weeks' time. Come see us for Wine Club Pickup. And if you need to check out the website, that's where you can find out all the information on Wine Club. We'll ship it to you and we'll put a little recipe in there for you as well. And like I said, come and see us uh, November 11th. Uh, 14th and 21st. 14th and 21st. We'll do our little um, uh, wine club pickup. Wine club pickup. We'll do bubbles our bubbles and crepes. Bubbles and crepes. I got a little mouse over here talking to me the whole time. Just keep me online, I guess. I don't know. But uh, come see us. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Have a great evening. And uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Cheers. Bye. Okay, now you can turn it back. Okay, sorry, I got way too excited.